So it's day one here at the site. My name's Todd Talbot and let's get started. It's gonna be electric, baby. Adventures in real estate. Not sure if it gets more exciting. I mean, maybe December 25th, but other than that, we're prepped and ready. We got our framing crew coming in today. We're just getting lined up. Lumber should be here in about 10 minutes and we're ready to frame. Well, form first, then frame. Lumber has arrived. Thank God for the cranes. Woohoo! That's Phil from Poco Building Supply. He's lifting in the two by 10. Raj and Andrea's trying to sound smart to each other. Just kidding, they are smart. You don't want a hand bomb rebar if you can avoid it. It is so heavy and dirty. Let's fast forward some of the boring stuff. This part is critical to get right. We've got some numbers on our plans that don't match up with the building that's hovering in the air. I think we've had pretty much every element subtly changed in the last 18 hours. Hopefully we're over the hump, we get this part right and we're off to the races. So I hired uh, Raj and his crew, Pro Edge Developments, to come and help me out with the forming and framing. That's what they specialize in. And one of the things I appreciate is his meticulousness, which kind of matches mine. We're both a little OCD, making sure that everything is well organized, good communication, all of those elements. Today's a big day because we had the city inspector by, as well as our structural engineer. Those are kind of two pressure moments. You need those uh, inspections in order to be cleared to pour the foundation. The structural engineer takes all of the liability in the project. They're doing the detailed inspection of the rebar and the formwork to make sure everything is as they have drawn it. We had one little thing that we need to tweak up, but other than that, the city's happy, so now we just have to do the paperwork. Honestly, we're a little bit ahead of schedule, which I don't think I've ever said in my life at all. It's weird because normally I'm doing most of this myself and uh, I feel a bit redundant just standing here talking to a camera. Oh, there's the big guy now. Raj is on site, everyone. Everyone behave themselves. <laughs> Let me introduce you uh, to Raj and we'll talk a little bit about some of the details, some of the ways that he does it and break down kind of where we're at. I am far from a sound man. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Raj, I already talked to you about him. Normally I don't allow people on the site who are better looking, but I made an exception for Raj. Thank you. So I thought it would be fun to just kind of walk around and you could share you know, why we did what we did. Most people when they walk into a basement, they just walk on the slab and they don't realize kind of what's going on underneath the slab. And there's, there is a it's lot going a on. We've got this big footing down here and then this little curb wall. So the engineer spec'd two foot footings yep. with three 15M rebar and an eight inch curb, two 15M rebar going horizontally and then 16 inch verticals. Okay, so we've got, we've got this center formwork to carry the load of the middle of the house and then we've got um, our footings that run around the outside of the house. Even just the footprint of the foundation, you wanna make sure it lines up with the house. You've done a bunch of the lifts, and, like this kind of construction with Josh and Zbiak, and I always get anxious that, you know, we're not moving fast enough, but that detail work to make sure the surveying and everything is lined up, I mean, that's really where you spend your time and energy. So this part is the part of the foundation that will get backfilled with dirt. This part is the sunken patio, which will be exposed on the inside. And we've used paper faced plywood on this section. It's a bit more work and uh, it takes a bit more time to get this right. Yeah. But it's definitely worth it. These are rental forms, which are easy strip system, a little dirtier, a little cheaper. They go up quicker, but you can still get a fairly decent straight wall. Everything is just as strong. Oh yeah. So we'll water these down, uh, get all this, the sawdust off. When they pour the concrete, the concrete won't stick to this. You know, it's, it's a small thing that we do, but I think it makes a big difference because you can't redo it. So in here, you can see these, these orange cones, they get left into the concrete. And then once you take that form work off, you like snap the, the metal. And the metal part here mm -hmm. actually stays inside the concrete. Correct. 
People might not consider that you have to get services in and out of the building. There's three pipes going in through here. And we like to get all the service knockouts done ahead of time so you don't have to break any concrete and do any chipping and stuff like that. You don't want to repair concrete. No, you don't. You want to make no. sure that this yeah. stage is right. We're actually using air to water heat pump, which isn't used very often. I figured that we could put two lines in one, yep. but they were like with air to water, they're big. A lot bigger. It's sure. Just little nuances that save lots of time and effort and money at the I, end of the day. I agree. I agree. If you get it right now. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> What's next? This is a tie down. You know more about these. They're spec. They've got ridiculous names like SD74125. Yeah, yeah, they got a fun name. This is a STHD10, which is gets nailed onto your studs. And there's also another system, which would be an anchor bolt with a hold down on top. Right. That goes inside the wall. And this section here is buried in the concrete and obviously has this lip. So it's, exactly. we got turnbuckles, which are actually used in more applications in framing than just in foundations. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> we use this uh, on the outside walls here. I can show you right here. We use these to brace our walls up. And the good thing with these is once we pour the concrete, we can adjust everything, restring line the walls, make sure everything's nice and perfect. So basically you can, you can turn this, loosen it or tighten it. And that allows us to kind of adjust the walls. Well, it's <laughs> funny you take them for granted, right? Yeah. Because you're using them all the time. I think in my next life, I'd like to be a framer. You want to be a framer? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I'll apply for it's, a it's, job. It's not as fun as you think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's also a little bit stressful, especially this stage. I find concrete the most mm. stressful part of the yeah, of I'm, the build. I'm always a bit nervous on concrete day, for sure. You want to make sure everything's tickety-boo and yeah. you double-checked everything. Timing, Timing, like it's go time once the concrete's there. City of Vancouver. Look at that. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> did I do something wrong? I did something right. I'm providing a service. Right on. That's fantastic. Right. Okay, so let's okay. talk about this detail. So this is a little bit unique <clears throat> to how you like to pour the footing. This foundation is only about four feet tall. If it's taller, we don't usually do a mono pour where you pour the footings and the foundation wall at the same time. Because I like to put a wider bottom wheeler on. So you can see most of the footing is blocked off. They don't have to adjust the concrete to a drier mix. They can keep it nice and wet, allowing it to consolidate better and still getting a good solid product without having concrete spill everywhere. I think one of the things that people don't appreciate is sequencing. Really successful construction is about, you know, having a good plan. We're obviously formed up. What's next? Pour the concrete into the, the forming. Snap our lines, start our pony walls. I love the term pony wall. Where did that come from? I, I don't know, honestly. We've been. Uh, <laughs> I know, everyone just says pony wall. pony wall. Was it like a. Uh, maybe it's a small well, horse. It, it's a smaller wall, so it's not a full height wall. That's so right. it's, a, it's a pony wall. There, it's a there you go. Pony there, it's a pony okay, wall. we figured it out. There you go. This is good, man. It is. It you is. did good. Okay. Raj <laughs> was worried about being on camera. I know, I'm a little camera shy. He's a, he's a pro. He's a pro. <laughs> Let's okay, one last thing, oh one God. last thing. So <laughs> there's two different details. We're getting really into the fine fine details of form work here. But this part is just a one by two. Mm -hmm. This is chamfer, which is a little kind of triangular piece of wood. I'll let you explain kind of the difference between those two. Okay, so the one by two is our pour strip for our foundation. So when the concrete gets poured into the form, they'll travel to this point. And then this is the sunken patio top of walls. You won't see this wall once the framing goes on top. This section will be exposed. So we put a chamfer strip in here, which is three quarters by three quarters, allowing the wall to have a nice detailed finish and no sharp edges. So people are completely bored out of their brains yeah. about <laughs> how to build a foundation, turnbuckles and vibrators. vibrators. That's all you need to know. The funny thing is, is that the original house, you take down the concrete walls here, no rebar. It's not tied down. Nothing. No rebar. No footing. Nothing. Very no, different construction. No, no anchor bolts. <clears throat> no anchor okay. bolts. No tie downs. Yeah. Not plumb. So this is foundations for dummies. Not that I'm calling you a dummy, of course. This is our footing, and this is a good representation of a wall. A wall can be this short, or it can be seven feet, 10 feet tall. We build the footing out of two by material. In this case, uh, the engineer has specced it to be 10 inches deep. So we're using a two by 10 here. And then for our curb wall, just based on how high the wall needs to be, we're also using two by 10 up here. Everything needs to be staked 
into the ground so that it doesn't blow out and also braced everywhere. And you don't want this to break apart and really you don't want it to move at all. So all of this stuff eventually gets covered up. You won't even see it, but it gives the structural support for the walls that are going to hold up the center of the house. You know, our, our base layer of our foundation. Okay. Hey Derek, can we, can we make less noise? Make noise, but less noise. You can just turn the volume just, just down a little bit? Just turn the volume down, please? Yeah. yeah just, uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, great. Okay, are you picking up on this mic as well? Yeah, you, yeah, both of us. We're not just <laughs> subtitling you. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! It's like big butter knife or... You could use these on the barbecue. Okay, so... <laughs> That's not WCB safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. This is, sure. this is this, this is our first date. This is this is kind of fun. I like it. It is kind of fun. We're in the honeymoon stage. <laughs> yeah, we let's, are. Let's yeah. keep it. Let's keep we it haven't going. argued yet. <laughs> More vibration, the better. Yes. Yes. I mean, we could probably do a whole segment on sexual innuendo of construction products. I, I bet. First I of bet. all, construct. I mean, concrete is all about vibrators. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> vibrators. <laughs> some are super long. Yeah. Some are short. <laughs> Uh, next, we'll strip the forms. Should we pour first? Yeah. yeah right. Let's do that. <laughs> Just strip them up. Wow, these look yeah. great. We're only about making people look good here. I mean, it's a little tricky with Andreas, if you but. Don't follow me around. It's kind of awkward. Yeah, he's like, don't follow me, but you know, he's like opening to the camera. I've never been embarrassed on camera. I take my pants off. I jump in a pool. I'll basically do whatever. We didn't need to know what the pants part. I don't need you to be like coming down here giving me like uber pose. I'm too shy for this. Okay, man. Nice, yeah. nice to meet you. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, the nicer you are to Peter, the nicer you're going to look. <laughs>